On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1955. We're going to be having a listen to Mario Lanza, and he's going to be performing Nessun Dorma. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we have a bit of a tonic for the videos that we've been looking at recently with pitch correction and auto-tune. With this particular video, we're going back to 1955, so well before any of that stuff was invented, and we're just going to be listening to one hell of a voice. And this particular version of Nessun Dorma was one of two that Mario recorded for the movie Serenade, and there's a video that goes with this, I think just from the movie that's been pieced together, but because he recorded the whole version, for the movie it means that we're going to be listening to that in the movie it does get lower in the mix because there's a scene that they go to and you have to listen to other people talking while he's performing in the background so we're going to be listening to that performance tonight as always there's a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out independently and watch it multiple times but let's jump into the performance and see how mario gets on have it I mean what a performance just bearing in mind that for the movie as I said at the beginning he did two takes so <laughs> I think this was the second of those two takes and comparing it with the videos that we've been looking at recently where 
in TV and film, you have singers or actors who are being auto-tuned in order to be able to hit notes and sing pitches accurately. But, you know, back in the mid 50s, Mario has a voice that, I mean, obviously he started singing when he was very young. And I think from the age of 16, he then started getting into training his voice proper properly and you know training it classically lesson dormer we've looked at pavarotti performing this and just the range that's required in order to sing this is just off the charts but having such body in the sound all the way through your range this is why classically trained singers are just a world apart from voices that you hear in the charts where you might hear some high notes but those high notes are being hit with a mixed voice, with a head voice, whereas when you're listening to a great tenor like this, the power of those notes up top is just on a totally different level. So let's take it all the way back to the beginning and take down the instrumentation to hear Mario's voice in a little bit more detail and see what we can see. <laughs> And with this composition, I must have said this on the Pavarotti version that we had a look at, just this instant change of an octave down from the D4 to the D3, you tend to get this in a lot of compositions where, you know, it's either classical music, opera, even in musical theatre, where you've just got compositions that are so difficult to sing, <laughs> literally in the first few notes. You, you've got to be able to have a range of at least an octave before you've even really got into the song. As we get through, you'll see that we've got this really consistent even vibrato, and it's not actually particularly wide. It's really controlled and just referencing the last video that I did about somebody saying that using vibrato was cheating, here we've got a great example of the control of vibrato and the skill of executing the vibrato consistently and so accurately. And I just want to draw your attention to how sharp we are of the note because we have this B3 where, like in the recent videos, you'll see this kind of thing nowadays kind of move down over the top of the line. We are almost exclusively above the note to begin with and then we just dip a little bit below but it's the drama of being above the note, which we always refer to on the channel, that when you are sharp, it's going to sound more dramatic. It's just that embodiment of a story and embodiment of a character and putting across that drama in the vocal performance. You know, if you are performing in the theatre, exactly the same as performing you know, for a movie, obviously not exactly the same. If you're performing at the theatre, you just get one try at it and you've got to do it night after night and sometimes a couple of times a day so you have to have that vocal endurance but the same thing applies to getting the character across through the voice and by being sharp it means you're always going to get that extra little bit of drama and it's going to hit your audience in a different way to for example a pop singer who won't be taking their chest voice up this high anyway in the you know, top end of the male tenor range, but they'll be singing over notes and have a really subtle vibrato and they'll never be consistently sharp. And really, I don't think you'll regularly see this kind of thing where it's exclusively sharp of the note because with pop music, it tends to just fly under the radar or you know, be very inoffensive. It's very much that the vocalist isn't putting across a story and a physical embodiment of a character through their voice is telling the story of a song. But in pop music, it's very much blending in with the other instrumentation. So 
all the instruments will be tuned to 440 hertz so the voice sits just over that line of 440 hertz so it kind of blends in there it doesn't really stand out and take your attention have the drama of this kind of approach of being sharp and by the way i have calibrated the pitch monitoring software to 446 hertz i think something like that so that we do get a realistic representation of where mario sang this and where he was sharp of the note uh, because yeah if i didn't calibrate it then we wouldn't have the lines or at least the lines wouldn't really be a true reference point so i have changed that but let's get back into it <laughs> Again, this vibrato, the control, and it being a skill, being able to control it in this manner. The pitch descends, but it isn't like going, oh, and kind of just going straight from note to note. And just sliding there, we've got this vibrato that's descending at the same time as the pitch. So, I mean, just total control. Let's listen in slow motion. <laughs> So it's that, you, you can almost hear steps in there going, ah, you know, until he then gets down to uh, this F sharp three, you know, being bang on. And then as we add the vibrato, again, and just, you know, coming above the F sharp three here, especially nowadays, we're losing the expression of vocalists because being sharp of a note doesn't mean it's wrong. Being flat of a note doesn't mean it's wrong. It's got a certain type of expression to it. So when you hear a great classical singer and they're singing sharp of the note, we feel the emotion and the drama of the note. We don't necessarily think, oh, we, you know, we're so locked into pitch that we can tell he, you know, he's singing sharp here, so therefore it's bad. All you do is just listen to it and appreciate uh, that emotion that, that comes with being sharp. Obviously, we know that it's sharp because we can look at it, we can analyze it, we can break it down. But you don't do this when you're listening to something. When you're listening to something, you're hit with just the expression of it. But anyway, let's get back into this. <laughs> And sometimes we do get some of the background strings, you know, just firing off here on the pitch monitoring software. But don't worry about that. That wasn't a C sharp five uh, that was being hit. But even still, when we take this back, you know, looking up here, we've got our, you know, D4, D sharp four, and the F sharp four. And looking at this kind of slide up that we have, you know, F sharp three down here, and then sharp of the F sharp four. So we've got that octave just from nowhere that just sounds so great. And you know, I know that I'm going through this literally, you know, note by note, but listen to the way that the voice stays tonally consistent. And this is what a great trained voice can do. They can take you up into the male tenor range, but with the same voice. The and if anything, with a great tenor, the sound opens up rather than getting smaller. And, and this is very much the opposite of just mainstream contemporary singing. As you ascend, you tend to get thinner. And this is the point that everybody does. This is why you have to train your voice for a lifetime in order to be able to do this kind of thing because as you go up going that kind of thing happens where you feel like oh i've got to i've got to get light in order to get up there and then i can fill in my chest voice when i come back down this is the opposite to what i just did the sound gets bigger contemporary vocalists can hit these notes but it's going to be in a mixed voice it's going to be in a head voice it's going to be even in falsetto and in classical singing uh well falsetto means false in italian so it means that the true tenors are hitting these notes in chest voice and that's what you have to train your lifetime in order to be able to achieve to get 
all the way up here to you know, the B4 and the C5 in chest voice. But when somebody comes along and say, for example, they sing an A4 or B4 or C5 in falsetto, in that you know, very light airy sound that I did earlier, they are seen as false. It's like, well, no, that's not it. That's not what we do. <laughs> that's not uh, classical singing. And that's why they just be chucked out because they say, well, you've got to be having a laugh. If you're hitting notes in falsetto, in order to hit the notes properly, you've got to train. You can't just, you know, fake it, which or do it falsely, which as I've already demonstrated, I can do. I can hit notes up there, but I can't hit notes like this, <laughs> you know, hitting a B4 and a C5 with this kind of body in the sound. Great classical singers and classically trained singers have been singing for a lifetime. So then when they get into their kind of 20s and their 30s, you can start to appreciate the seasoned sound of the voice because it just keeps on getting richer and fuller as they keep on training. So like I said, we get to enjoy the years and years and years of dedication and hard graft that these singers have put in. I mean, I could be stopping this every second, but listen to the the incidental expressions between notes, or the way that Mario enters into notes. And I'm just gonna listen. I mean, great example here of the vibrato, but I'm just gonna take that back to listen to just the gap between the notes. And there, the, the way that we don't go straight into nah, like that, we go, we kind of go, nah. I'm going to listen to this in slow motion. There, there's like this little flip that happened, but it's just a controlled flip of expression. So it's not like singing two notes independently, it's, it's just like, you know, he's decided, well, no, he's singing with emotion. And this is the point that he's not decided that, oh, I'm going to sing this note followed by another note. He's just going to put expression into it, allow his voice to cry potentially and get a little bit of a flip before then grabbing it uh, because it gives the following note after the expression a totally different impact emotionally. So, I mean, it's really subtle, but all of these things, just a top, top level voice. I mean, look at the way all of this is just perfectly blended from one note into the next. And this is very much the embodiment of uh, the opposite of auto-tune and pitch correction, just allowing this note to flow. I mean, all over the place. I know that we have gone up a semitone, but it's not as if we've hit the F3 in a straight line and then we've gone up to the F sharp 3 in a straight line. We've, we've gone down, we've gone up, we've gone down, we've gone up. And, you know, if we listen to this in slow motion, you'll hear how it does just subtly waver in pitch. And at the end, we even go sharp. It teases you along to that final pitch to then be, you know, a lot closer to our reference of where we know, obviously, with the instrumentation in the background, we know where the voice should be, but it just takes on a tiny journey, literally over a couple of notes. Rather than you know being on, on that journey throughout the whole song, we're getting taken on journeys here that just last a note or two. And it's amazing the control because it is so deliberate, that delivery, that it's almost like when we listen to it again, we are listening in slow motion, but it's not. When the vibrato then comes in, you realize, oh, wow, yeah, this is at full speed, but it's just total control of going to these notes, the F sharp four. Interestingly here, the F four and coming down to the B three, we're now a little bit more over these lines. So the pitch is now a little bit stricter. <laughs> I 
And I mean, what you have to try and take in is that A4 going, ah, that is the note. And listen to me doing an A4 going, ah, and listen to Mario's voice. And this is the point that hitting that, and even if I was going, ah, that would happen. If I was trying to get it in chest voice, you lose the, the body, you reach, because the voice isn't trained to do it like we're hearing. So, I mean, a different video for tonight and probably a, a bit of a welcome break from the auto-tune and pitch correction videos. And, you know, going back to the mid 50s, this is a great thing that you get to hear the voice of a classically trained singer just, giving you something that technology will never be able to give you because technology is always going to be taking away from something like this but yeah great to have a listen to this and the other thing is that this was just the second take that he did for the movie and for the soundtrack so i believe that first take has also been released so singers of this kind of quality have the ability to produce this you know potentially night after night or for every single performance so it doesn't need to be tweaked afterwards and yes yeah, sadly even old performances now are being auto tuned and pitch corrected and released and hopefully they leave this kind of thing alone because it would sound so weird if you took all of the tiny variations in pitch out of this performance because that's what makes it what it is all of that emotion in the voice and you don't even have to speak the language to lock into an emotion in this performance. And that's what's so great about it. But anyway, thank you guys for requesting this particular video for me to take a look at. As always, keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock.